I'd like to start by asking you all to take a, take a deep sigh of relief. Breathe all the way in through your nose. Let it go. And at the end, gently close your eyes. Slowly breathe through your nose. And observe yourself for a second. And ask yourself, what is my state? Which thoughts, emotions, sensations are present within me right now? What is my state of mind and body? And how did I get there? How did I get into this state? Is this the state I want? Take another deep sigh of relief, breathe all the way in. Let it go. All right, open your eyes. A few years ago, I was overweight, depressed, and burned out. I was stuck in my own life. And growing up, I was always a few steps behind on everybody else, a few steps behind on my environment. I was the fat kid in the back of the class. I couldn't focus, couldn't sit still. I'm wigg wiggling with my legs like I see some of you, my people, do right now. And growing up, it presented me with some challenges. But it wasn't until I actually grew up and became a science teacher working with kids and started to see just how many people are suffering from a lack of fake focus, the inability to process the demands of the modern world, this high-speed, hyper-connected modern world. And the question weighed on me. I got obsessed by this conundrum of the modern world. How come, even though we have the most abundance ever, the most technology, the best healthcare ever, there's no generation that has ever lived that has had it so easy in those respects. But how come we're still so depressed, so stressed, overweight, addicted, and burned out? The question weighed on me. But luckily, in that area of my life, I encountered a new group of friends, a new social group, and they were like, you know what, Casper? Let's forget all about that stuff. Forget about studying and work and trying to save the world. Let's just party all night, get high, drink, play video games all night, eat junk food, and forget about all this trouble. Now, that made me go, guys, listen up. That is the best idea I've ever heard. So that's exactly what I did. And not too long later, I found myself here. Um, this is a guy I call Fat Casper. Uh, I was about 35 kilos overweight. I was having anxiety attacks. I had uh, a heart arrhythmia disorder, frequent migraines. I was talented, though. As you can see, I was a very good multitasker because I could hold a cigarette, scream into a microphone, and flip the middle finger at the same time. So a very talented guy. It was around that time that I decided to change something. It was time to change something. So I went to see a doctor to get some tests done about my heart and my headaches. And in the meantime, I decided to try and reluctantly change a few things about my lifestyle. Then a few weeks later, when the test came in, there was an experience that I remember very vividly. I was sitting in the doctor's office. She was studying my graphs. And she looked up at me and she said, well, looks like you're healthy. And I said, what does that mean? because I don't feel so healthy. And she said, well, you only have one migraine a month. You're only 15 kilos overweight. You only smoke three or four cigarettes per day. It's all pretty average. It's pretty normal. OK, so healthy might not be the same thing as normal. I was average. And normality didn't seem so appealing to me anymore. I had gotten myself from minus 100 to zero. And I wondered, what if I keep climbing and keep practicing? Maybe I can go from zero to plus 100. Why not, instead of staying normal, take one step beyond and go for optimal, or even exceptional? And that's when I became a biohacker. I decided to regard myself as a set of complicated, interrelated biological systems, systems that can be studied, that can be optimized, that can be hacked. And I turned myself into a human guinea pig. I started doing all kinds of weird experiments. I got way deep into neuropsychology. I studied all the esoteric practices I could find, meditation, breath work, chanting. I started to learn all kinds of weird skills to see if I could optimize my focus. 
I started to study with the Iceman to learn how to conquer the cold and climb mountains in my shorts. And just about anything I could find in terms of diet, I tested everything on myself to see what worked. And slowly but surely, I started to take steps. My movement improved, my heart rate improved, and all of the lifestyle factors started to actually come to a place of optimal. And with every single experiment I did, I learned something deep, deep about myself. And there is one thing that I'd like to share with you that is the most insightful and important thing in my whole journey, and it comes back in all of my experiments. And that is the state of the nervous system. The question I just asked you, what is your state? How did you get there? Is it the state you want? And how do you change it? It might be the most important skill in the modern world where we are constantly surrounded by impulses and input and information without knowing what it means to us, without even knowing if it's true nowadays. So this skill of controlling what is within your own skin might be the most important superpower of the 21st century. So an important thing to understand is that you are all basically still hunter-gatherers physiologically. We are still the same as our hunter-gatherer ancestors. And this hunter-gatherer ancestor needs a nervous system with two very important functions that we all still use. The first one is outside of the cave, and the other one is inside of the cave. Now, imagine yourself as a hunter-gatherer. You step outside of your cave, and it's go time. You need your senses open, right? You need to make sure you can hunt, you can gather, you can protect, you can fight off competitors, you can build your territory. And then once you've hunted and gathered and find your mate and done all the stuff that's important outside of your cave, you go into the cave, your air, eyes stare into the distance, you feel your stomach growl, you prepare your food, you get ready to digest. In scientific terms, we have the sympathetic system, the fight-flight system, and we have the parasympathetic system, the rest and digest and recover system. Now, that hunter-gatherer brain, that hunter-gatherer nervous system needs to be extremely sensitive to any bit of information that is about survival. Any rustle in the bushes, the change of a, song, of a bird's song might say something about potential danger. You need to be hyper-open. And you need to be extremely lazy and ready to take in as much food as you can when you finally can. So now we put that hunter-gatherer physiology in a modern world of non-stop newscasts, 24-hour drive throughs and that's how we end up overstimulated, overweight, and burnt out. Because when do we ever go back into the cave? When we do, when we're finally safe in our house and ready to eat and rest and digest, we have our newscasts and we have our fear IV coming in and we keep scanning, we keep telling our brain it's outside of the cave. Because does your nervous system really know the difference between an actual danger and a politician screaming fear and war? Probably not. And this way we jack our nervous system. We keep ourselves outside of the cave artificially. We keep our heart rate rise. We keep the hormones of stress flushing through our system. <sighs> so here's the good news. You hold in you the remote control of that nervous system. And that remote control is your breath. We all know that there is a state of mind and body, and that the state of mind and body can come with a state of breath. So if you are in fight flight, if you are anxious, if you are scared, if you are having a panic attack, you're breathing fast into your mouth, into your chest. Like for example, when you're nervous for a meeting or as a hunter gatherer running away from a bear. And we all know that if you are very calm and relaxed and you're sitting on the couch and you're ready to sleep, your breathing slows down, you breathe through your nose and into your diaphragm. So the ultimate biohack, the easiest biohack I can give you to start to take control over your nervous system is your breath. Because like I said, we know with a state of mind and body comes a state of breath, but with a state of breath also comes a state of mind and body. It's two-way traffic. If you breathe like you're having a panic attack, <gasps> guaranteed you'll have a panic attack. But if you breathe through your nose and calm yourself down and withhold yourself from breathing too fast, you will calm down. So the next time you're in it, on the way to a busy meeting, or you have that deadline that's pushing on you, that dreadful email comes in, I'd like to invite you to work with your breath, because that makes breath the most important thing you do in your day. And if you think it's not the most important thing you do in a day, hold your breath, do the other stuff first, and then when you have your priorities back in check, come back to your breath. So to finish off, I would like to give you this tool to take with you 
and we'll go through a little breathing protocol. It'll take three minutes. Make sure your feet are centered on the ground. Put your hands in your lap. Relax your posture. And it's very important to be calm and relaxed when you do breathing practice because you might get dizzy. Now, the great thing is the way you breathe determines your state. So if this breathing practice makes you feel kind of weird, then start breathing normal and you'll feel normal. So make sure that you know you're always in control of this powerful tool of breath. We're going to start with a deep sigh of relief, then I'll start an animation and it'll be self-evident and I'll talk you through it and you can join the animation. So breathe all the way in. Let it go. There we go. Breathe in. Two. Three. Breathe out. Two. Three. In. Out. Again, breathe in. and out. Now breathe all the way in. Now we're going to hold it for three counts. Hold your breath. And breathe out. And at the end, we will hold it again for three counts. Big breath in, all the way in, and again, hold. Breathe out. Full deep breath in through your nose. Three more rounds, but the holds will be longer. Let's take a deep, full breath in. Hold it. And breathe out. Last time, all the way in. And breathe out. We'll go back to your normal breathing. Gently close your eyes. Give yourself another scan. Ask yourself, what is my state? What is present within me? How does the state I'm in now compare to the state I was in before? The difference between the first state and the second state is the influence you gained in your nervous system simply by changing your breath. So the next time you're stressed, just ride your breath a step deeper into your nervous system, get back in your cave, and relax. Thank you. <laughs>